Now it's going. <laughs> you got like touch. Soft touch. Yes. Sorry, the public finds this meeting so fascinating that um, generally the board makes a decision today. They can table if they want to. Oh, Alan, I'm so glad that you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Explain, please, the yellow border versus the broken border that is outside of the yellow border. Okay. Okay. My, my question is, or where I'm going with this, is I'm concerned that I guess they're going to have to put everything they plant inside the yellow and on the top side, in this case, where you're looking at the top side of the parking places. Right. That's, that's their goal. And the, the buffer, you know, the, the, the dash or broken line area, that's too big to be a 50 foot buffer. I mean, 50 foot right away, isn't it? or even not right away, isn't it? 50 feet is large, it's, but it's been in place for years. Mm -hmm. 
Now, the, what, 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 the reason I'm asking is they're parking on the easement then. Right. Okay, that, that was where I'm going with this. They're actually parking on the easement. Yes, sir. Yes, under sir. the edge of the power line. Yes, sir. The county engineer has requested that they get a clearance from EMC, although we know it's going to be just pavement, but the, we want some type of assurance from EMC that that is okay and is okay. Um, but they, <coughs> this yellow area represents that 50 foot easement. Um, right, that's, that's what I was asking. That's the 50 foot easement, the yellow part, right. not the dashed dark line that's outside. That's correct. So what is the dark line? What that's is just an area we just wanted to focus on. It, it's a graphic way to emphasize the area we're talking about, yeah. but it's just a graphic. It doesn't represent any line. Okay, that, okay. that was my problem. To the top how, is the property how, line. How far is it from the top, the yellow lines at the top, to the property at, at the top? Where, where's the edge of the property? Right here. That top line. That yellow line is the top of the property. Yes. Well, they've got, based on that rendering, probably six, seven, eight feet of actual dirt on the other side of the curve where the parking stops. Actually, from, from this area to the property line, I estimate roughly 30 feet. Can I, can I speak? Can I get, uh, hold on, hold on. Roughly 30 feet. So if they were to plant right on top of that, the edge of that curve, then they would still have 30 feet of just open, open land <coughs> and won't abut right up to the property line. So our concern is the cars, the headlights shining on the property, but we don't know when they're going to develop that, that property. Too. Okay, I don't have any more questions. Anybody else? Okay, is there anyone here in support of this application or anybody would like to give us any additional information? Please come to the lectern, give us your name and address for the record, and tell us what you wish to have taken under consideration. My name is Bruce Smith. I live at 2941 Hall Road, and I'm the Studio 8 Design. We're helping the church with this project. Uh, and a couple of things I'd like to point out, that area is a very low point in the site. There's a lot of drainage that naturally has occurred in that area. Right. Uh, and so we're limited as to the plant material that would survive in there. We're also limited as to how much we could grade it so that it would drain well, because then we'd be grading off the other people's property which is prohibited by zoning uh, requirements. So we're kind of stuck with the buffer requirement that requires a planning, but it's a very low area that we're limited as to what we can do to get it to drain well because of the impact on adjacent properties. So we started looking at, and, and then the third limitation is the fact that it's an overhead utility easement, so the large canopy trees, they would be having to cut those down at some point when they started getting into the the power lines. Um, and most trees that we looked at, uh, the species would not do well in, for a wet environment, would be tall enough that they would become a problem for the utility company at some point. So we uh, tried to think about getting some type of visual buffer there, but in a, in a more reasonable way that we don't want to go out and plant a bunch of trees that are going to be choked to death due to excess moisture and die. Um, so we want to plant shrubs that we can get some type of shrub species that would be a little bit more, um, uh, I guess, hardy in a, in a wet environment. Um, again, we, we want to be good neighbors and we want to provide a buffer to the neighbors to the north, but we don't want to go out and, and spend a lot of money on plant material that's going to die because of either wet materials or going to be cut down because of utility. So we kind of got a limit down low, and we've got a limit up high as to what plant material we would uh, we would be able to put there, and it would be suitable to survive. Out there. It's not a question of adding irrigation; that's not the problem. It's too much irrigation. Okay. So that's kind of the 
rock in the hard place that we're in. Anything else you'd like to put out? I can't think of anything, but if there were any questions, uh, any of the board members would be happy to try to answer. Any questions? Any discussion? I've got a board. question. Have y'all done any research as to the possibility of types of plants that occur? Yes, uh, Laura Gale with our office, who is our landscape designer, has looked at a lot of different plant materials. She's had a meeting with Carmela and, and talked about some plant materials that would be suitable for such an application. So she's going to speak to if, if you guys would have a specific question about plant material, I would like her to handle it because she would okay. do a better I job than I would. Okay. I have a question. I'm, sorry, I'm not sure if you'll be the one to answer. Well, I'll try. It, we'll try to... But the, the actual 50-foot easement, does it go to the back of the parking lot as well or to the top of the parking lot as well? It, it's going to come about uh, 20 feet into the parking lot. The, the parking space is about 20 feet deep, and you can see that it comes to the edge of that top row of parking. So it's coming into the parking area, and we're parking about 20 feet into that easement. Now, the power company, the initial discussions are they don't have an objection to that, and we'll get the documentation from them if they don't oppose that. Uh, and then we've got about 30 feet beyond the parking lot that uh, would serve as our buffer area. The only problem is that is a very low wet area. It holds a lot of water. It doesn't drain even in dry spells. Any other questions, discussions at this time? I'll let Laura make a talk a little bit about it. If you hear it, it comes at 11. My name is Lario. And just for the record, I'm not a landscape architect, I'm a landscape designer. Um, some of the requirements for the site, um, I've done a lot of commercial properties here in Valdosta over the past 10 years. Um, and in this buffer, it is a, a wet area. I've gone out there on numerous occasions after the rain, before the rain, and taken photos of the standing water in the situation. Um, a lot of the plant species that I would propose for this area do well if their feet wet. This kind of I have more culture, but they also grow to be about 100 feet tall um, in certain, certain areas. The um, wax myrtle is one that I would specify to put in, um, and it's going to get a little taller, but also I was thinking about the dwarf yokon holly to get the, the shrub count in. Um, the only thing that bothers me is that there isn't any existing canopy there right now, so anything that we do put in, even if it does like its feet wet, is probably going to get really burnt up in the sun with it the exposure to the sunlight out there. Um, the only thing that I was proposing is possibly use the buffer count and put it somewhere else on the site and potentially be able to figure out what to do with that in the future. Um, but as far as planting in that buffer with the standing water, I just feel like it'll be um, a, a, you know, growing money way. I mean, of course they can buy it, plant it, um, the maintenance on it, just keeping that area drained is just the main concern from the more culture standpoint. Can I answer the questions? Any other questions? Comments? Well, I have a comment here. Mm -hmm. Was your question answered? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I, those plants I would have suggested would be the Yopan Holly and the mm -hmm. Wax Myrtle. Right. And you can keep them from getting 100 feet tall. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. Any plant that you put out there, if you put Crate Myrtle out there, it's still going to get beaming down sun on it. So mm -hmm. best to choose a native plant that's appropriately adjusted to our environment. Mm -hmm. um, and the native plant species that I would um, suggest are the the feather brush, but the thing is, is that getting those to the church, they're going to be doing a lot of their landscaping within their community, so they're going to donate the plant material, put it in themselves, irrigate it themselves. I'm just worried about the availability of those plants to be able to get them to install, but I'd be happy to help the church. Um, they, they're certainly plants. available through um, a variety of um, nurseries in the area. Mm -hmm. so. I have two concerns. One is the, um, the discussion that has been how wet it is out there mm -hmm. and the possible survival rate or not of anything that's put there versus the canopies that are there. Is it not better to dig a drainage or holding pond to run the water off so that it is not mm -hmm. standing water? The engineer has, has a proposed um, on to the top right part of the, the parcel. Um, it's just not in these drawings. So um, by doing that, would that not eliminate the wet? I think that that would be a question for the civil engineer who's actually in the audience right now or in the meeting right now. Um, 
I think that it had to do, I think that he should probably answer that question. Okay. Any, other, any other questions, discussions? I'll, I would like to speak, whatever. Okay. Please exactly. come to the lecture and give us your name and address for the record. <coughs> Laura Gale. My address is 4154 Pebble Creek Drive. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Larry Sanders. I'm Civil Rights Mayor of the Air of Engineering. My address is 6490 Grew And I just wanted to uh, add to some of, the, some of the discussions that's been made so far. Um, I intentionally left that rear area at the existing rate as close to the existing rate as possible. Water, water ponds in that whole area down on the property to the north and builds up against that area. It has to build up to a certain elevation before it starts to flow to the east in a, in a small ditch that is, runs parallel with the, or it's within the utility. And as far as design goes, um, you're not really supposed to impound water on anybody. You're not, you have to account for the tension for what comes into your site. And to the greatest extent possible, let it do what it naturally does. Uh, if there wasn't a ponding problem there, I could have built that whole area up. I spoke to EMC and asked them what they would allow in that easement. And they said basically we could do what we wanted to as long as we weren't building structures or anything that would you know, possibly get over power lines. But prior to becoming a professional, Engineer, I worked for years in construction as for range of some construction, and almost without exception, when you build up right to a property line, you're going to have the potential for litigation if you make a problem. And in this situation, there was already water pond in there. So it's just, it's definitely not a situation where you're going to do anything where it even appears, even if you can justify it where it appears that you cause the pond. So that's the reason I left that alone. I am taking a little bit into the pond. The grading would only allow me to do so much. And to talk about your question about the ditch, that it's extremely flat there uh, to move to move water in a ditch without it starting to pond in the ditch and create wetlands has to be about 1%. And there's just no way to get 1% to get it out of there in any other way. Um, the pavement is actually, it's into the utility easement. A little bit, but the actual buffer line is the actual buffer line payment is not in the buffer line. And that was something this was wrong. I sent Paul Mel early on, and then we discovered that we have we were doing a 20 foot buffer as opposed to a 30 foot buffer. Uh, okay, one more thing I want to mention now. You guys can ask me whatever you want. Uh, the idea of fence. In that type of area, you'll be doing the same thing. You get ponds on a regular basis, but the soils are uh, or fairly fertile soil, so it doesn't pond for an extended period of time, but either chain link or wood fence with either rust or rock in a short amount of time, it would be a continual maintenance issue and continual cost. Uh, you're probably between 15 to $20,000 every time they have to replace that. So it's that. And on top of that, the utility line itself uh, runs uh, probably five foot north of where I'm showing sure the curb go. So there's going to be trucks in and out of there turning around working when they have to when they have to maintain that line. So it's not a it's not an ideal situation. Nobody's trying to get out of anything. We're just trying to do something that makes sense. All right. Any other questions? Any other discussion? So there is or is not a holding pond in the right corner? No, ma'am. There is a tension pond. Can I walk over there? Mm -hmm. Yes. There's a, uh, we designed a, basically an acre and a half detention pond here that would be a wet pond as well. So I was able to get that to drain, and everything's controlled by drainage with drainage. Um, you know, in theory, you, you, know, you can dig something as deep as you want to. But the depth that you're going to is what controls it. And my water elevation, my dirt grade above the elevation of the holding my of the constant water elevation is what controlled how far I could grade back this way to get water around there. If it was, you know, if I 
sometimes if it was 10 foot deep, I could you know, run a ditch all the way around. But it, it wasn't. So I graded back and got as much of that area into the pond as possible. Anything else? Thank you, sir. Is there anybody else who would like to give us any additional information? Discussions on the positive side. I have a question for Carmel. Um, do we does the county have a maximum impervious surface requirement? They have to leave a certain amount unpaved. Yes, we do. Um, and and how does this design drawing compare? Are they like right at the limit? Are they at their maximum? They are under the maximum requirement They're, because of that big because of the pond. Right. Okay, and, and the pond is meeting the requirement that they have to keep all of their water on site. Yes. And that pond will be fenced because we don't want church members falling. <laughs> I don't know the fencing requirement for ponds. Um, there's a as long as you maintain four to one slopes to the into the pond, your fence is not required. I'm going to add to that also. Uh, we have one of the church staff members here also. The church envisions this, like Larry said, is going to be a wet pond. It's not going to be an old nasty pond. It's going to maintain four feet of water, three to four feet of water. They plan for a water feature there. They plan for a dock. They plan to use it as a ministry tool for their youth department and kids and, and everybody. I mean, they envision benches and gazebos. And, you know, is that a walking trail? I mean, so they're, they're going to, it's not going to be one of these old, Sometimes we don't have very pretty detention areas. So. Okay, any other discussions? Any other questions? I'm just I'm concerned about the area that we're talking about, with it being wet, with the members donating and maintaining. And I understand that it's very difficult for a church, and, and money is always an issue. But having, with the plan that's in place right now, it doesn't that the, the plants would be maintained. They're likely to die because they're not going to be either what will be water healthy or even being water healthy. If, it, if we have a rainy season, it's going to be gone. One of the things that they stated in here was money as an issue. That's going to have to be a continual replacement. If there's no canopy, like um, Laura uh -huh. was saying, things are going to burn up as far as shrubs are concerned. I don't know if it's not better to, and please forgive me, I'm absolutely not an engineer, I'm not a landscape designer, but to to run a pipe, maybe bury a pipe underneath this back area that goes into the detention pond and run the water off so that you can plant some trees. Um, and maybe get back the 10 feet that you've requested, but or or that y'all have been willing to give up. But um, current situation stands. <coughs> I just don't think that it, it will be maintained. I think that it'll be planted, and then it will go by the wayside because they they're not going to know what to do. It's going to always be standing water. Okay, based on that. What is in code enforcement? I know in the, I think it's in the city that when they do planning, they have to be there, they have to survive for one year. And 
and after one year, I don't know that there's any piece in the what, what's in the county? In the county's requirement, they, it has to be healthy and thriving. From now on. Yes. And it would become complaint driven. driven if there was a problem. It's not up to code enforcement to go out here and check it. But if somebody says something, then code enforcement will go out and look at it. Yes. Yes. It's a matter. I have a question. Okay, my question. I think to Mr. Sanders would be hearing what she was describing is what we've got in our yard. French drains, I think that's what they call them. Why isn't this a feasible Well, the, I guess in my mind the biggest thing is if, if I dry up that area to, to, to try and do something like that, which I know that's not, uh, that's not a legitimate deal for for a variance, but uh, but the pipe would be extremely expensive. But that's not the reason that we don't have that. A free drain is extremely expensive. If you dry up that area, it's still a utility easement that is going to be trafficked on, and they'll have the legal right to traffic on it however they want to. So you still have a limited amount of space there, uh, you know, somewhere around 30 foot to get power power trucks in and out of there. It's, and they you know they have to turn and in weird angles and stuff like that, get on the outside of the power pole with bucket trucks. So it's I thought the easement was on the pavement. No, the easement goes beyond the pavement, 30 feet. It's 20 feet into the pavement. But to address that question, uh, historically there has been a drainage ditch along the back of that property that has taken water from properties uphill, taken that water across this property down to properties beyond this property. What you're asking us to do is divert that water onto our site and handle all that water. And I think that is putting a hardship on the church that I don't think the code allows us to do. I mean, we would have to handle a tremendous amount of water to get it off there because there's a tremendous amount of water that traverses all the way across the back of that property coming from properties uphill from us. Uh, and I think that, that would, we would have to absorb a tremendous amount of more water to keep it dry enough to, to make it a viable landscaping buffer without being sensitive to the type of materials we put there. Yes, Reggie, do you have a question? I, I have a statement for the board. Uh, utility easements are um, an unpleasant fact of life. And when someone has a utility easement on their property, they can't grow trees, they can't grow crops, they can't grow stuff, they can't put buildings, they can't, there's a lot of things that you can't do on your property when you own it, when it has utility easement on it. This property has a 50 foot utility easement on it, um, which apparently they're going to try to pave into, which I think the utility is being very kind about that. But um, in most cases, you're not allowed to do that. So that would mean, if they actually didn't have that permission, that they would not be able to have that first row of parking. And looking on there, they could, instead of having two rows of parking which face the same direction with some something, they could have turned the parking around and put that, uh, what's going to be their little islands, and have at the, the northern side of that then a buffer area to do their tree planting, which is then going to be outside of the easement. So the utility easement, whether it comes down the side of the road and you can't have your trees right up to it because the utility company comes along and they chop off all those branches, or whether you have a pipeline that comes on your property and you can't do anything there. Well, the pieces of property come with these kinds of horrible things on them. And then you have to figure out how to work around it. So a way to work around this would be to flip the parking instead of having everybody park in two rows facing the same way, which is what it looks like they're doing there, to have instead a parking row that goes the other way, get rid of that edge parking row, and put the buffers, put the trees where that edge parking is. So you would have somewhat less parking, uh, but you would be totally outside of that horrible, stupid thing that's on your property, which is utility easement. Well, that's... Uh... As far as, design, as far as design goes, we're noticeably under the impervious uh, pervious requirement. 
And I mean, that would be detrimental to the church. The, the parking lot, the building, everything is. Well, is so in the bottom part, the parking couldn't go to the edge of the parking, way in the bottom right. That's, those are two out parcels. On, see, the main drive on either side are out parcels that are yeah, being sold. Shades. No, no, connected to that. Connected to the parking lot, not not by the out parcels, but connected to the parking lot on the bottom right hand side. Can that go farther along to the edge of the property? Right here. Right there. That's where the pond drains. That's that's the still that's where everything drains naturally. We're doing it with uh so you can't bring that parking lot over to that edge? No, I'll with the drain like we have the park the pond is above that. The pond is above that. But the pond is deep. This drain area, this is a spillway. It drains across that whole spillway. And it comes down and gets narrow and narrow. And you have to have grading to maintain Can you do that under the parking lot? Mm -hmm. I mean, they do that under the parking lot right out here, right? The water goes under the parking lot and it's held in the something under the parking lot. Well, you can do anything uh, if you spend enough money, but I don't know that. I feel sure we would want to relocate trees somewhere else that we wouldn't just spend another. $75,000 trying to move parking around and redesign it. Well, I'm just, you know, sort of, I'm, I'm sensitive to that whole utility easements are a horrible thing to try to work around on your property. And it's, I, I'm really impressed that the power company says you could be on it at all because they really don't like you on that property. They do, they don't mind. It's just, they just have to accept the fact that if they ever need to, that they don't like control it. Well, and that's the, the shrubbery is going to be in that area. The shrubbery, shrubbery could get torn out by the utility. That's why I would propose an only shrubbery. The shrubbery, there's fuel along the back side of this bird. I feel a little bit so that water would not come straight onto our parking lot. The shrubbery will survive fine up against the curb where we've got a couple of foot of field place there. But in the utility easement, I mean, there's nothing we can do to guarantee it with trucks drive. I apologize. I, I think that we might have a little bit of confusion here. Show me again, please, where the um, utility easement, bring, bring your finger top to bottom there, where the utility easement is. This is the utility easement. In the yellow. And this, which runs pretty much along this line, is the 20 foot, is the 30 foot buffer requirement. The 20 foot is actually right here. So that, the part that basically buffer is. If we move it to the property line, this part of the vehicle is going to travel. So the entire 50 feet of utility easement is on church property, but only 20 feet of that 50 is being paved. Uh, the yes, depth, that's, the, that's the depth that's of the parking space. It varies slightly, but that's, that's pretty close. <clears throat> and the buffer is going to have to go in the middle, based on what we're seeing right here, of the utility easement. Well, whatever we, the power line uh, runs more or less center, center along this line right here. Uh -huh. So guess what I'm saying is probably not doing a very good job of is <coughs> my understanding is the buffer is measured from the rear property line in, which is 20 foot. But it's impractical to plant anything where the, where the utility vehicles have to track without having to replace them. The stuff that is usable and can be planted is right up against the curb and gutter. If they want traffic on it and we can meet the, the, the shrub count, and if the shade trees are an issue, I can't speak on behalf of the church, but I'm sure the church is willing to, to try to figure out how to get them on the site somewhere else. It's just we can't, we really don't have any proof of the utility easement. Cool. Is there a problem? Any other questions? I've got a question to come out. I want to make sure that that's clear. Y'all are waiving the tree requirement and approve the recommended approval for the scrub process. That's correct. And based on complaint in the future, it has to be maintained forever now? Okay. Are we ready to make a motion? Not yet. Okay. Any other questions? Any other discussion? 
Have we heard all we're going to hear from the positive side? Was there any contact to your office? I'm, I'm assuming we don't have a ghost out there to send an objection. <laughs> Was there any contact to your office in objection or any questions? No. no. Okay. Any other discussions before we try to entertain a motion? I make a motion to, to approve the request for the variance, stipulating that they don't have to put the trees, but they do have to put the shrubbery requirements. They need it on A, C, and D. Now, motion on the okay. I, I would second that if you would um, add the phrase that they have to be in the I have motion on the floor from Nancy. Second. I have second from Mr. Alvarado. All in favor, please raise a hand. All opposed. The count is six one. Good luck with it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, uh, minutes. You are allowed, you are allowed to free pass to fuss at me. The units are not ready for free. The table is ready next time. In the fact that we do not have minutes, I will dispense with asking for a vote to approve the minutes. My apology. Apology accepted. Any other? Excuse me, do business, old business. I, I have a question. Um, sometime back at the city council, they approved the benches um, for the city. Are benches allowed in the county? Or are they in violation of the ODC? The sign ordinance. We are silent when it comes to the benches. The benches in the right of way. We do have a prohibited sign section that talks about you can't put signs on trees rocks. If those benches are in the county on private property, are they allowed? On private property? Yes. If they're advertising a business? No, they're advertising the tax drivers and the churches and whatever, whoever advertises on the benches. I'll have to look at it. See what it, because the I've content. seen them outside of the city. I have a question. I'll have to look at it. Why is the county silent on the benches? The right one. Because they're owned by a charitable group? No, I, I, I can't say why they're silent. I have an issue in the county, to my knowledge. That's the issue. Any other business we need to tend to? I did see a little blurb that the city was going to do some kind of ID thing? Similar to what you saw for me, the police chief is willing to do that for city appointees. So if you are interested, I've got my handy little camera, and I'll take your picture. I swear I will not post my milk cartons or use it for my shots or whatever, but we can get city appointees and the county is still? No, we're not ready to do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing else to do. Thank you very much for your time and patience and attention, and we stand adjourned. Thanks for coming. <laughs> I'm sorry I was late. <laughs> for those of you who are interested, that is back today. Oh, oh yeah, hallelujah. Where did they know that? They didn't know that. Hey, man. Hey, what's up? What's, what's, what's been going on with Matt? Uh -oh. um, it's kind of an actual story about two and a half